How's it going, guys? My name's Mary here, and I am with Adam from Envive, and we are checking out a pretty spooky game called Pamela. How's it going, Adam? Hey, good, good. Awesome to be here. Now, this is just the opening story of this game, but this is a creepy survival horror game, is it not? Yeah, so we've just woken up from cryosleep here. We had a brief little intro sequence there. Um, so I've woken up into this uh, this cryo clinic, and I'm going to quickly check uh, check my vitals, see how I'm doing here. Um, just woke up from cryo sleep, so I'm a little bit uh, a little bit thirsty and hungry, as you would probably expect to be. So I'm going to take a look around the environment here. Um, I have this device actually that I can use to scan uh, scan the environment, scan the containers around here. Found some awesome health items there. Uh, I'm going to quickly give this room a little a little run through here. So this is a survival game, so we need to make sure we're finding some food and water as we're as we're exploring here, as well as um, some building items here, which I actually found a. Ion core here, which we can use in a few minutes to uh, to start sample a little base for ourselves. Wow! So you have a all-in-one device there that not only tells you your health and your needs, but it scans the room and oh, that looks like a shield. <laughs> that so is it a looks shield. like that might be something that comes in handy later, considering the person to your right looks pretty dead. Yes, exactly. So something uh, something terrible has gone wrong in the city of Eden, which is where we woke up here. Um, the citizens have been, have been afflicted by a, a terrible disease that causes this uncontrollable bone growth. Um, so you'll see half of the citizens have been turned into these uh, grotesque kind of human statues and the rest have been kind of driven mad with pain. So we'll uh, probably encounter a few of them as we're making our way out of here. There's just not a lot of things that sound worse than bone disease. Is it called bonitis? <laughs> it's not called bonitis, but I suppose that's a colloquial name we can uh, we can go with. <laughs> that sounds horrible. So your bones are growing like w without your control, maybe hardening, and it causes extreme pain. That's why all these people are going insane. Exactly. It slowly transforms muscle into bone, basically. It's sort of loosely based on some real diseases, which are uh, some truly terrible things. So um, yeah, we, we want to. Yeah, it's it's quite a it's quite a grotesque and terrible terrible thing. So right, and that's setting the foundation for where we are here. But you don't know that much more beyond that, do you? No, at this point, uh, you know, you you were you're basically dropped into this environment here, and you're free to uh, to basically explore and uh, you know figure things out sort of at your own pace. So you wouldn't really know uh, too much of actually <laughs> what we're even talking about at this point as the you know as as the player. Um, and I'm not going to say too much more about the. Uh, you know how all this stuff happened because that will be actually. Oh, there we go. We got a security robot here. He's on patrol. He's gonna leave me alone. Why? Uh, because he's uh, he's probably looking for someone else. So I haven't actually done anything to get them to come after me yet. Um, but they will actually go after you if you uh, uh, if you if you do something to antagonize them. They'll actually be fighting the other citizens as well. So they're pretty tough enemies. So I'm gonna leave him alone there. Okay. <laughs> We're not quite well equipped enough to to fight that guy. He's a, a nice neutral, so as long as you're on the side of good, exactly. he leads you be. Exactly. <laughs> and they're pretty tough, so I'm not going to do anything to change that right now. Um, I did pick up one weapon here as we are leaving, so this is a, a poison dart gun. Um, it actually, our weapon system actually attack, uh, has a kind of modular system where you attach these pieces onto this uh, metal device on your arm there. Um, so you can mix and match different weapons to kind of suit your playstyle. So these are some more building items I'm kind of gathering as we're going here got some uh, shield pylon walls as well as a power generator so mm -hmm. and it looks like your inventory system can be maxed out and you have uh, looks almost like the uh, Tetris-esque <laughs> form where you have to fit everything in is that is that the yes, way it is exactly so Ooh, yeah banana if you <laughs> exactly so you can actually go in and you know kind of reorganize things if you want to kind of you know maximize your inventory your space, space here if you want to be OCD about it you know you can rotate some things like that Great. <laughs> yeah and there's a limited amount of space so uh, you know you want to be careful with how you're organizing things. yeah especially when you're uh, when you're going to be making crafting new items like you're going to see in any kind of survival game that it, it becomes a meta game of what items you keep which ones you end up throwing away the regret of not <laughs> taking as much as you possibly could, so that's really interesting. Exactly. Uh, what kinds of things do you need? Oh. Oh, we can some guys here. I'm gonna hit these guys with some poison darts here. The bones. Oh god. Oh man, I was not expecting that. <laughs> See, the enemies are actually procedurally uh, procedurally placed here. So even me playing through this thing uh, oh, many god. times. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna actually. actually pretty freaky. You're gonna run. <laughs> run. I'm gonna run. I'm, I'm gonna Can grab. You look behind uh, you. Oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly duck in here. Okay. And grab a better weapon. How smart are they? Can they uh, follow you? Will they they'll, come in here? Yeah, they'll follow me. Um, <gasps> oh my god. I'm gonna try and not get cornered in there because they're definitely gonna corner me in that room. Okay. Um, 
Uh, does your shield have a cooldown, or can you just hold it up forever? It, uh, it'll actually get broken down as, uh, as they attack you. Um, so eventually, if you have multiple guys coming at you, it'll actually win you over time. It can actually break, so, okay. which is not good, as you can imagine. <laughs> All right, well, you took him out. I think. That was pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, this guy's coming nowhere. I think we're, I think we're kind of looking good here, but I still hear some people around, so. I'm sure a lot of other, uh, a lot of people of RM already maybe felt this way, but there's definitely a Bioshock vibe of yeah. this game when you're talking about, um, kind of exploring a place that should be beautiful but is terrible and watching something that could have been some something wonderful decaying uh, and that's kind of a, a really nice environment a nice atmosphere that you've laid out for us here yeah absolutely um oh, my name is terrible ah. um, <laughs> absolutely Bioshock is one of uh, is definitely one of the games that uh, a lot of us on the team are huge fans of you know we played all of them um I have to say a lot of people a lot of people bring up System Shock and it's Kind of blasphemous to say I actually haven't played System Shock, but uh, but definitely some of those influences are in there. My God. Okay, here we go. Oh, get the drop on this. Game. All right. Let's see if I can clear this place out here. We're we're amped up a little bit for the demo here. These are some high level weapons we've given ourselves ourselves here. That's very kind of you. <laughs> exactly. All right. So now this place is cleared out a little bit. I'm going to set up a little base here because I've been gathering some supplies that have been going here. Yeah, so, what kind of supplies have you acquired? Yeah, so this, uh, so this here, yeah, this is a power transmitter, which is basically like our generator. We, mm -hmm. our, our building system is, uh, I, I want to say, a little bit kind of StarCraft inspired in that we have, uh, we have this generator we can drop down here, slot in this power core, and that's actually going to give us a, a kind of power range. So now I can build within this area. So I have a few of these, uh, a few of these wall pylons here, which I can drop down, and we have a, a pretty freeform kind of building system. It's sort of a point to point. Um, kind of idea here, so we can basically just drop these two pylons here, and that's going to build a wall in between there. Oh, you're making yourself a little home here. Exactly, yeah. So our, our, the nature of our environment is is pretty. Uh, it's 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 not uh, you know it's not an open, you know, kind of field or forest kind of thing. Um, so we uh, we we want to make sure the building system is pretty is pretty flexible, so we can kind of adapt to the you know different different areas here. So I've set up a little a little perimeter here. I'm going to block off this one last little area just to make sure we're. We're really safe here. Great. So, yeah. So now we've got this little perimeter set up here. I can drop down a few other things here. Oh, this is nice. A future tent. I exactly. Exactly. Uh, so it's not too dark yet. So these lights are a little bit, a little bit redundant. But I'm going to drop them down anyways because it will be dark soon. So we got some lights we can place here. So now that we have this power grid, we can do uh, do a couple different things in here. Uh, we can also drop down a hydroponics uh, garden here. So these will actually be able to be used to uh, to grow food basically. So the longer you play the game, the resources in the environment will will dwindle over time because you know you're you know you're consuming them. The uh, the afflicted actually will consume them as well. So the longer you play, you're going to be hard pressed to find food. After the afflicted are eating the very bananas that you are trying to <laughs> scrape together and eat. Exactly, exactly. You know they're just trying to survive in this environment the same way that you are, even though they've been sort of you know disfigured in their shadows of their former selves. They're still trying to survive just the same. So. You know, it's a it, it's a single player game, but we want to make the AI you know feel as as much like you know present uh, members of this <laughs> of this environment as much as the player is. Right. And now we've seen. I'm not really sure exactly where we are, but it looks like some kind of scientist uh, future laboratory or like nice uh, nice indoor area. But will there be outdoors as well? Yeah, actually, if we uh, if we take a quick run through over. Over, it's getting a little bit dark, so we might not be able to see it too well. But we actually have a quite large uh, kind of courtyard environment out here, which is basically in the center of this this city. So we're actually in one of the towers now. This is the residential tower. Mm -hmm. So if you look out here, you can see uh, you can get a little glimpse. It's a little bit dim outside, but you can see there's this large kind of open courtyard area, which uh, which will be totally open and available to explore. And there's uh, there's actually this large kind of circular structure here in the middle. Um, that's a security outpost. So if you want to go there, there's going to be some higher level enemies. There's going to be some uh, pretty powerful weapons you can you can kind of scavenge there as well. So got a lot, got a lot of different areas in the game that will have uh, will they'll feature their own kinds of 
know, their own kinds of loot, their own kinds of enemies to, to make it, you know, interesting as you're exploring these new spaces. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot more to investigate. Now, what's the end goal? Of, of course, you want to survive as long as you can. But, I mean, at the end of the day, once you have your hydroponic farm going and you got nice uh, walls and you feel safe and sound, I mean, why get up in the morning? Why even live at all? Sure, yeah. So there's a, there's a few things you can do to continue kind of, um, you know, improving your... Uh, Improving your survivability, there's a couple ways you can actually genetically modify your body. So some of the same um, things that were so you know similar to in a sort of similar way to Bioshock, you know, as you mentioned earlier, um, you'll actually be able to to modify your own body somewhat to you know give yourself more health, more endurance, uh, stronger resistance to attacks, these kind of things. Um, and you'll also be able to find you know higher level equipment. So these weapons, you know, we found here just a couple examples of some of the things you can find, but there's going to be a, a huge, huge swath of different bits of equipment that will actually allow some different play styles from sort of a more kind of combat uh, focus to even some that focus on stealth and exploration a little bit more. Uh, will there always be just your standard half humanoid crazies? Will there be any kind of bosses or uh, larger enemies people can look forward to? Yeah, there actually uh, there is a few uh, there's a few tougher enemies um, that we that we have in this demo that I actually haven't run into yet. So because they're know procedural, so there's no way you can know where they are. Exactly. I'm just getting a little status alert there. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. How, um, how hungry are you? Yeah, get, getting hungry here. I need to actually, oh, I got some algae crisps. Great. So we will, we'll eat those. Um, that sounds but, delicious. But uh, yeah, there's, there's going to be a few different uh, NPC factions we can encounter. So we already saw some of the, the afflicted, the, the sort of standard uh, Lemon. enemy. Uh, <laughs> and um, and the, the Seekers, which are this, uh, the security robots, those are two of the factions that are in the game. But uh, there will also be a couple that we haven't, we haven't quite talked about yet, but they're going to be uh, they're going to be kind of wild cards, so they'll sort of be hostile towards, uh, you know, towards the other guys. So they can actually be they can end up fighting with the afflicted. So you can sort of get in the middle of some of these confrontations and sort of. You can choose one as well, or. Yeah, somewhat. I mean, the, they they have uh, the different factions uh, without without uh, you know saying too much. Um, they they have their own you know uh, kind of. Which one's evil? Uh, you know, they're, they're always kinda, an evil faction. You know, they're kind of all. You know, they're a little bit evil. They're a little bit, you know, just fighting for themselves in a way. You know, they're just, uh, you know, they're trying to survive. This is their city, actually. You know, we kind of woke up, so we're sort of the, you know, we're almost the bad guys in this situation. Interesting. You know? <laughs> You're invading on their territory now. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, you know, that's actually a tough enemy up there. Okay. Trying to see enemies kind of glowing there. I'm gonna try to. There looks like a multiple. It looks like there's a few. Yeah, there's a couple here. Yikes! Oh God, he's got. Split arms? Yes, he does actually. So he's a that's a more that's a more heavily uh, heavily afflicted citizen. So he's actually got some more heavy deformation going on there. Okay. His jaws kind of hang there. His arms are split. And he's really he's a really tough guy. So I'm gonna try to make sure I don't get hit. Either. Yeah, they almost look like they've had like genetic splicing. Yeah, a little bit. His uh, toes. Ew, he's got webbed feet. <laughs> oh, this guy's got me cornered here. Oh god. Now, what happens when you get seriously injured? Uh, is there a way to get more health up? Yeah, I'm actually going to heal. Yeah, actually, just uh, just used a med hypo there. So we actually were lucky to find one of those in the starting area. So, mm -hmm. so we don't have uh, we don't have too much uh, in the way for generating health. I right, took this guy here. All right, that that went well. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we don't have too much in the way for generating health. Um, yeah, food doesn't regen health. It just no, stops mean, you from being hungry. Yeah, you know, we, we might, uh, you know, when you're full health and full hunger, we, we might, you know, like give you a, a, a slight kind of health regen, but uh, depends how depends how nice we want to be, I suppose. That's right, because, <laughs> you know, this is uh, not done, and this is, you guys are still balancing and tweaking this. Exactly, and it is supposed to be a fairly uh, a fairly intense and, you know, challenging experience. You know, it's a permadeath game, so uh, we, we, we want to maintain that sort of... Uh, you know, that consistent level of, of challenge and tension. Yeah, know. that's an interesting choice that you guys made to make this permadeath. It adds, uh, obviously, just a way more intense level of difficulty to this game. Now you guys are starting from scratch every time. Um, but once you die and you start over from scratch, you don't get any of your items. You're basically 100% start over. There's no forgiveness here. Yeah, so basically uh, there, there'll be a few kind of... Uh, response point-esque kind of things that you can sort of uncover in the environment that can give you, you know, maybe like one extra life sort of thing. So if you find one of these places, uh, you you might be able to respawn and actually find your items, you know, on your body basically wherever you died. But generally speaking, you're pretty much going to be starting from scratch if you die. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, we, uh, we were looking at having some kind of uh, sort of persistent 
uh, leveling system. So you, you do get some points towards when you start with your next character, you might be able to get, you know, a little bit more health or a little bit more, you know, endurance or something with your next character. So, you know, not not too much because we do want it to revolve around, you know, looting and each life, you know, is, is different than the last. But at the same time, you know, people people do like being able to feel like they made some progress, even right. if you get, you know, totally, uh, totally killed early on. <laughs> how long can you expect to actually survive? Like how long uh, would a really good player be able to function in this world? I mean, when you first start, of course, you're going to have five minute playthroughs when you get absolutely destroyed right away. But yeah. I mean, how long would you expect people to be able to survive once they've once they've acquired, uh, you know, maybe some bonuses to their characters and they know where to find stuff and they know what they're doing? Yeah, I mean, you could uh, I, I would expect uh, like, I mean, I hope hopefully many uh, you know many hours eventually you know it's uh, it is it's a pretty free form game so you know I think different people are going to latch onto different aspects of it but you know when it comes to like you know building your base and trying to find the absolute best equipment um, you know I'd like to think that you know playthrough could you know could go easily you know five to ten hours kind of thing if you're able to you know able to survive that long and you really want to uncover you know every nook and cranny and you know and we're going to be adding more to the game as well like we were initially you know going to be looking at release kind of later on in the summer kind of thing but you know we have a lot of plans for different uh you know different areas and different weapons and things like that that we uh that we want to be adding after the fact we have a you know <laughs> we have a plan <laughs> so we'll see how far we get with that but all right uh now do you sleep to regen anything like what do you do in here now that it's nighttime and you're pretty safe for the evening yeah sure so uh yeah you would be able to sleep i haven't actually found a bed here but uh you would you would be able to sleep and actually pass the night so you could kind of wake up and uh you know, see uh, see some light again, but uh, does that help with your health? Does it help with anything um, sleeping? Yeah, exactly. You would regenerate some health at a bit of a at a bit of a kind of hunger and uh, you know hunger and thirst cost basically. Is you know you're you're gonna be tired. You know you wake up in the morning, you're you're hungry, but your health is regenerated a bit. So uh, one last thing we'll take a look at here actually is our power system. So I have this interface here that I can uh, I can draw power from like the main the main city's power grid basically. Okay. Um, I'm actually I think I'm dying. Right now. You're I, dying? I am dying right now. I'm dehydrated. I need to find some food, actually. Oh, you need... <laughs> you're thirsty. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I'm, I'm dying here. Maybe this is going to be a good way to end it. <laughs> but, oh, no. Uh, but anyway... You gotta hurry up and find a lemon or something. Yeah. Anyway, before I die here, you can just see that we've, uh, we've we've turned on the power here now, so we've got some... Uh, Light. We've got some lights. We've got a little bit better visibility going on. Oh, no. This, this is, is a shame. Good. This is not looking good. <laughs> See, there you go. But I mean, that's the nature of the game, though. I mean, I, you know, oh, you know Drink what? That milk. I found some milk. All right. There we go. Oh, okay. that was a close one. That's really stressful. All right. I'm good. I'm, I'm just parched now. So I'm not, you know, I'm not dying. I'm not great either, but we're, we're somewhere in the middle. Trash so, can milk, too. Like, there's no way that milk is. <laughs> yeah, ugh. you know, it's, that milk's it's gone probably, bad. It's probably not great, but I mean, it's like some sci fi future milk, you know, it's got like <laughs> some special. Uh, you know, preservatives in or something. <laughs> and, and without giving away too much, because obviously a lot of this game is about exploration and figuring out what happened here. Uh, is there any tidbits you can give me about the lore or this world and, and why you're here and what you're doing? Yeah, sure. So the the city is called Eden. It's this sort of uh, utopian society that actually is... Used to be. Uh, used, yeah, sorry. It used to be a utopian society that was uh, out on the... <gasps> to your right. Just, oh, God. Oh, that yeah, person. Yeah, statue guy, you can see he's got this, uh, he's basically been turned to a human statue as his bones have sort of solidified. Oh my god, you know, it's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, and so something happened confused. to these people to make yeah. them freak out. Yeah. Yeah, so the... <laughs> falling through the wall of clutters aren't quite set up properly yet, I guess. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so but the city used to be this utopian society that basically was floating on the ocean. It's sort of this, um... Uh, self-sustaining society that actually uh, p pulls power from the sun and the ocean. So it basically was like this kind of self-regenerating. That's oh, beautiful. You know, yeah, this is this huge, huge tower in right now. Got a lot of, yeah, I never actually looked up this, but a lot of verticality going on here in level design. Oh, that's sweet. Um, yeah, so I mean, you, you basically wake up and, and something obviously has gone terribly wrong. But, uh, you know, you, of course, at this point in the game, you really have no idea what's going on. So, you know, as you explore, you can find tidbits on, you know, people's laptops and things like that. Um, that you can actually, you know, get glimpses of as to uh, to what might have actually happened. It seems like there's a lot to unpack, and I would love to uh, get into this world and learn a lot more about it. So, uh, when can people expect to play this game? 
Yeah, so we don't have a, a set in stone release date yet, but uh, we're, we're aiming for kind of a later, late summer, kind of early fall sort of uh, launch this summer, and that'll be on the, and that'll be on Steam on PC. And do you have uh, plans to go anywhere else besides PC? You know, not at this point. Um, this is actually our first game uh, studio, so we're uh, we're kind of <laughs> setting our sights realistically to not stretch ourselves too thin. But um, we we would love to bring the game to consoles. Uh, you know, probably after the PC release. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about it, so. We definitely want to make it happen so as many people can enjoy the game as possible. Sweet. Well, thanks for showing me that, Adam. Yeah, absolutely. It's great being here. Yeah. So that was Pamela, guys, and you guys can look forward to that later on this summer, and you can find it on Steam.